Gypsy John Frankham was the true first Gypsy King and a man who was a pioneer for all young traveling men to enter the world of boxing after a stellar amateur career and being the only ever traveling man to win the British Light Heavyweight Champ Championship over 15 grueling rounds and was ranked as fifth light heavyweight in the world. This snapshot of the great man's rise to becoming the first and original Gypsy King is a tribute to him and the Franken family. Big thanks to my good friend Willie Joyce of the Oxford Joyce's for helping me with this and of course a shout out to the Irish King of the Gypsies, Big Joe Joyce and the family. We hope to see young Joe back with his family before too long. Okay with that being said let's get into it. Born into a family of fighters Johnny Frankham's path to boxing, the boxing ring, was carved from a young age. Son of Jimmy Frankham, a gentleman fighter, and Janie Ball, Johnny and his brother Sam were often found training and competing against each other. These early experiences laid the foundation for Johnny's successful boxing career. Johnny learned his trade at Reading's Boxing Club, where he began his fighting journey. Although losing his first few bouts, Johnny's resilience and determination led him to a six-year winning run. An extraordinary talented boxer, he only ever lost on points and won numerous amateur athletic association titles. He did actually lose one on a TKO, but it was a cut. He never got dropped, just to clarify that. His achievements didn't stop there. Johnny became the first person to win four NABC championships and had the honour of captaining England two or three times a significant feat for a traveller kid. Johnny turned professional in 1970 and won the Southern Area Championship in 1971 in his 12th fight against David Hawes. Johnny had only lost one fight up to this point due to a nasty cut against Manchester's Jeff Shaw at the York Hall Bethnal Green. Jeff Shaw was a tremendous puncher stopping 13 of his 15 wins and apart from this technical stoppage Johnny Frank was never knocked out or stopped, showing his incredible durability and defensive skills. Johnny also beat unbeaten Phil Matthews, a renowned big puncher in Mayfair on the journey to Southern Area Champion. Despite being knocked down in the first round, Johnny came back to win on points. And Johnny Franklin talks of Matthews being a massive puncher and it sent his head ski west when he got hit in that first round. But his skill and footwork and his sort of durability enabled him to win in comfortable style over the eight rounds. Johnny Franken's run of impressive wins came to an end in a tight contest over eight rounds by Tom the Bomb Bethy, an American fighter from North Carolina, fighting out of New York. Interestingly, Bethy went on to fight and lose on points to the great Michael Spinks, and earlier in his career was knocked out clean by the same Phil Matthews at York Hall that Johnny Franken had beaten despite being knocked down. After this fight, Franken went on another impressive run of unbeaten fights before fighting for an eliminator for the British light heavyweight title at the York Hall against Roy John in 1972. He lost that fight. Um, it was a sort of tight de decision. In fact, a lot of the fights in Johnny Franken's career seemed to be sort of razor close to losses that he lost, or maybe you were a bit unfairly lost. Um, but back in, that, in those days, they were fighting a lot, many times per year. Now, between 1972 and 1975, Johnny had a number of fights and his career was sort of on a roller coaster with a number of wins and losses via close points decisions. Although on the cobbles, Johnny Franklin was said to have been unmatched and unbeaten in all fights he undertook outside the ring. Jimmy Stockin, in his book on the cobbles, talks warmly of his close relationship with the Frankens and said Johnny was great company. Jimmy said one tale he enjoyed telling was an account of him and his brother Sam had with a posh-speaking non-travelling man they met one day. He spoke with plums in his mouth, but wanted to fight Johnny. The story goes, Johnny and his brother Sam were driving through Oxford. This is a story from um, Jimmy Stockton's book, and I'll put a link in the description, guys. So I'll just read this out to you guys. The story goes, Johnny and his brother Sam were driving through Oxford one sunny afternoon when their truck passed a well-dressed young man on a bike. He was wearing a tweed suit and his trouser legs were restrained from flapping by bicycle clips. The cyclist felt like the truck had passed too close to him and began waving his fist and shouting at the brothers. We'll have a laugh here with this mush, smiled Johnny. 
and he pulled up and the man approached. I say, that was damn close to me. I suggest you drive with a bit more care and attention in the future. Johnny and his brother started to laugh at the man's in indignation and plummy voice. It isn't a laughing matter, protested the man. Do you want fisticuffs? With this, he held his hands high, John L. Sullivan style. John and his brother, Johnny and his brother were shocked and amused. Little did the man know they were seasoned street fighters, one of whom would one day become a famous boxing champion. They agreed to step off the road into an adjoining field. Now the young man lectured as if he was talking to a couple of dunces. When I say commence, we come out fighting. Do you understand? Commence means start. Remember that word and we fight until one of us says submit. Do you understand? He was talking as if Johnny and Sam were subnormal. But they just smiled, knowing that Johnny would soon splatter the young fool. The man took his shirt off and jacket and neatly folded them up. As he came to the middle, Johnny took a swipe. But the young man ducked and bobbed and came up with an uppercut and put Johnny Frankham, future boxing champion, straight on his arse. Sam was puzzled. Johnny was puzzled. He got up and the man danced around him and managed to get through Johnny's guard, decking him again. By now, Johnny was dazed and the man spun him around and crashed a blow into the side of his head. Johnny was back down for a third time. Sam was worried. Johnny Franklin was taking a beating. This went on for a quarter of an hour. There was blood on Johnny's face, but somehow he managed to catch the young man with a combination, which had him on his knees. Submit! Submit! That's it. Submit. I've been trying to think of that word, that effing word, for the last ten minutes, gasped Johnny, as the plummy guy screamed submit. Now, guys, that story, Jimmy goes on to say that it was a tale he believed had been passed down through generations of families, changing the names to fit the storyteller, but said they were all gripped listening to Johnny's story and just shows what a you know fun guy he was outside the ring as well and a great storyteller, it is told. The pinnacle of Johnny's career came when he faced the great Chris Finnegan for the British light heavyweight title at the Royal Albert Hall in a thrilling 15-round battle. Johnny emerged victorious, solidifying his place in boxing history with this fantastic victory against a great fighter in Finnegan who had fought John Conte twice and was a very, very well-rounded boxer. Finnegan did avenge his loss with a points win over Johnny Frankham in the rematch, but the real Gypsy King's legacy was sealed and the Frankham name stamped in history forever. Johnny's celebrity status grew after winning the title, leading to an extraordinary opportunity to tour with the legendary Muhammad Ali. Together they engaged in exhibition fights, showcasing their skills and entertaining audiences. Johnny Frankham has often spoke of this experience with great reverence, stating unequivocal. Uh, unequivocally, that Ali was the greatest. In one famous photo of their celebrated tour, Johnny Frankham hovers over the down Muhammad Ali on the canvas. Staged or not, it was another example of the great fun Johnny and Ali had on their tour and a remarkable achievement from a young travelling lad. Johnny Frankham's story is a tale of perseverance, talent and triumph. A true legend of the ring, his journey from a young boy sparring with his brother Sam to touring with Muhammad Ali and becoming the British light heavyweight champion is an inspiration to aspiring boxers and fans alike. His tale is a timeless reminder that no matter where you came from, with dedication and heart, you can achieve greatness.